Hello there, everybody. I'm Mel Allen, and this is Baseball Collection. Yo, and hello, everybody. Mike here, Baseball Collector, and tonight I'm doing a video about what's going on, man. It, I don't know. If you're paying attention at all, and most of us are if you're watching this video because you collect cards, and whether you're a collector or you think like an investor, or you're flipping or you're both or some combination, you have noticed how crazy, absolutely bananas crazy card prices have been over the last at least several months, right? And, I, you know, I, I want to weigh in on this because it's kind of interesting to me. Fascinating, I should say. It's it, The question might be, when is it going to end? When is this going to stop going nuts? The first answer I would say is, it doesn't necessarily have to. Uh, I, I think a lot of things are driving prices up. And those factors to me are, you've got, I mean, you got people staying home and they got more time on their hands and they're searching eBay and there's no sports. That's a huge factor. So they're trying to fill that void with something. There are tons and tons of mainstream references to cards now. Uh, you've got Gary Vee talking about it and he has been for a while. And... You've got, you know, different channels that are catering to the investor type, the flipper people. Uh, you've got breakers that are going nuts. And to me, the beginning of the end might be the signal of Sports Illustrated just putting out an article about breakers and how during this time of coronavirus that people are, you know, uh, spending more time and money doing that, that they have more cash flow because they're not spending money on other things because they just can't do those other things, whether it's vacations or whatever. And to me, like, I, I think if they would have had the national this year, it would have been just crazy busy and prices would have been just through the roof, just like they are right now on eBay and other places. I think it's, you know, the Sports Illustrated article to me kind of signals the beginning of the end because once it really goes mainstream, once anything goes mainstream and becomes that popular in popular culture, it's hard for it to maintain that type of trajectory. It doesn't Again, I think that car, sports card prices are going to continue to go up for the, a while. Like, not it's not ending soon, I don't think. Um, and it's hard to define what time frame we're talking about here, but certainly not. Uh, for several more months, six months, even a year. It could carry all the way through maybe the national next year in Chicago, if there is a national next year in Chicago. That sounds like blasphemy to a lot of people, myself included. I'm already pissed off enough that they're probably not going to have a national this year. But, I mean, you understand why, but it's just no fun. So, the Sports Illustrated article, mainstream. Anytime something gets that popular... I mean, I'm just waiting for the next Don West to emerge and sports cards start getting hawked on Home Shopping Network again and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, it's just gotten crazy, absolutely crazy. And I've been watching people talk about cards that were, you know, they're either breaking boxes or talking about it on their videos of just how things have gone nuts. Simple, simple stuff like Frank Thomas rookies and King Griffey Jr. rookies and Jeter rookies, um, you know, Ripken, just all these players, their prices are just astronomically going up, doubling and tripling over the course of a few months. Uh, one of my good friends bought the Ermsey Trout five days ago, which is a Topps 2020 project card. It's a Ermsey's the artist, Mike Trout rookie card is the card they're doing. And he bought it a week ago. By the way, you could buy these at the very beginning for $19.99 or $17 or 50 cents if you bought a two pack, you know, two cards at once. 
the Armsy Trout. Go look it up. I'm telling you, it's nuts. Uh, when they first came out on eBay, they were going for seventy, eighty dollars. They got uh, my friend bought one for two hundred fifty dollars five days ago. He got it in the mail today, stuck it on eBay, flipped it, and sold it for five hundred fifty bucks. <laughs> Literally in the time he he did it, he went and had lunch, watched a show, came back, and it had already sold at five hundred fifty dollars. And he had had it in his possession for no more than probably an hour till it was already sold. Things like that are just crazy. And we're talking about a reprint of a card. I mean, I mean, it's not even a real rookie. or I mean, it, I, and I can't explain it. And I'm not complaining. I love it. I think it's great. This is going to sound like I'm bitching about that. I'm not at all. It's great for the hobby. It's great for the, for the card market. It's great for people that already own cards. But the question might be, like, who's getting into the card game today? Who are the people that are paying these, what we would call, if we've been doing this a while, exorbitant prices for these cards. Who's doing that? Uh, I'm going to talk about some cards here in a minute that I would be hard-pressed to buy today. Like, I would have a hard time spending the money that they're worth today. And maybe it's kind of like anything. Like, I remember when milk was a nickel, you know, back in my day. That kind of attitude, but... It, it's going nuts. I think, how can kids, or young adults, let's say, or kids for that matter, how can they get into the hobby today with all of the key cards being just completely out of sight in terms of prices? And again, I'm not saying I have an answer to that. I just, I think it's fun to talk about. It's a great discussion topic. We're all part of this hobby. Uh, it's great to see prices go up. It's great for your people that have these types of collections. I just wonder who's buying them. Who is it that's buying them? Uh, don't know. And so I'm going to flip it around and show some cards and just kind of talk through some things because I'll show you kind of some cards that and what I paid for them and when I bought them and that kind of thing. And uh, we'll talk about it. Some slabs. Hang on one second. All right. So the... The, the baseline card that I want to talk about that really got me thinking about this topic was I went and I was looking at this card right here and checking on eBay and I had heard rumors of what they were going for and I'm like, surely not. Surely this card is not going for $2,100 and some of them are going a little higher. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, holy crap. I mean, I got this card... If you know the story of this card, uh, I traded, I, I had two in my possession that were raw. One I had literally found rummaging and one was given to me. I turned them into PSA at the National last year to, and I got them back at the National. So I got a nine and I got a six. I took 50 bucks, those two cards, and I traded for this Gem Mint 10, which at the time were going for around a thousand bucks, 950 to a thousand dollars at the national. You could buy them all day for that price. Here we are essentially, you know, 10 months later and this card is more than doubled. It's, they're selling $2,100, $2,200. And it's like, holy crap, <coughs> excuse me. And that's awesome. Like, I don't know. Do I think this card should be that much money? No. Would I buy one today at $2,100, $2,200? Not just no, but hell no. But they are going for that. So great. I'm just glad I have one. And what I think is just crazy is that card. So I'm going to move it to the side because I'm going to show some other stuff here. But... Again, it's awesome that they are worth it. I don't, again, I'm not, this isn't a ragging on the, what's happening. We're just talking through it. It's fascinating to me. So that card is going for what I said it was, which by the way, is more than what this card goes for. But this card here, this Gehrig 33 Gaudi in a two, by the way, not a great grade, but a two. The last couple of these sold for around two grand. I paid about $700 for this one. And granted, that was, you know, many years ago. But still, that's just nuts. So vintage is having its appreciation too. 
Not it's not just uh, the modern stuff. Although it's all going nuts is where I'm going with this. Everything's doing well. So there's the Gehrig. This maze, which is also only a two, but I love it. I'm glad to have it. I paid sixteen hundred for this back at the National last year as well. And it, they're going right now for eighteen fifty, nineteen hundred dollars. So that's a good rate of return. You know, not bad. This card here, this Hank Aaron rookie. Uh, and by the way, this is not vintage versus modern. I I just happen to have vintage cards that I can use to talk about. I don't have a lot of modern stuff, but it's it's happening everywhere. Uh, this Henry Aaron, Hank Aaron rookie card I bought two years ago at the National in Cleveland. I paid $1,000 for this one. And these cards all day, 1600 so, pretty nice. The uh, famous Filmington Clemente that I bought, uh, I paid thirteen seventy five for that. They're about fourteen to fifteen hundred, so not a huge return on that so far. But that's all right. Here's another really good one. You could buy actually two of these Ruth cards for the Trout. And let's talk about that for a second. So this is fascinating. This is a playing era. Actually, it's Ruth's, one of Ruth's last cards, the 35 Gowdy 4-in-1. It's actually got two Hall of Famers on it, Rabbit and Moranville's on it as well. And what I find kind of interesting about what's happening, and I don't know what this says about the card market. I just, it's these are just facts I'm going to go over. The Trout, by the way, there are... There have been 7,100, this is as of this morning I looked, 7,185 Trouts have been graded. 4,724 of them have been given a Gem Mint 10. So there's almost 5,000 Gem Mint 10s. Only 94 of this Ruth card have been graded, period. Like total, there's only 94 of them. Talk about a short print, you know. And it's Babe Ruth, right? Probably the best baseball player that has ever lived is Babe Ruth. Some might say Mike Trout. Um, but there's only 94 of these. This card is about a thousand bucks, give or take, in this grade. So it's still a common card. But you you could buy two of these versus one Trout. And I'm, again, I'm not saying that you should buy two of these versus buying the Trout. Buy whatever you want. But it is interesting. Um, here's another great example. So this Mickey Mantle, this is the 69 Tops last name in white, which is a very rare, uh, I guess, variation of this card. This card I bought last August, um, and I thought I overpaid for it at the time. I paid 300 bucks for it, and it's in a four. But it, it's a really nice four, as you can see. But I thought I may have overpaid for it a little bit, but I wanted it, so 300 bucks I paid for that. This card right now is about $1,000 it, it goes for in this grade. And the higher end stuff, the again, most of my vintage stuff is kind of mid to low grade. The higher grade stuff is going up just nuts, 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 exponentially higher than even this. So in, again, in August I bought this, so what's that? nine months um, this card is more than tripled like wow it does get you thinking do I, do I even want to keep all this stuff I mean shouldn't I just sell it <laughs> I mean, it, uh, the answer is no I'm not going to but it, it is certainly worth talking about um, so we got this trout over there and you gotta wonder trout is he's a current player He's amazing, best ball player on the planet, no question. And can his prices just keep going up? Eventually, will this card be worth the same as this card? Only time will tell. Who knows? Um, but could we one day be thinking about the Trout Update card the same way we think about the Mantle Rookie? Maybe. So that's it, guys. I'd love to hear what you think down below. 
just talking through this topic and let me know how what you think. What are the causes of all this? What might be the downfall of the current surge we're seeing in prices? I'd love to hear your opinions. Love to hear what you think. Thanks everybody for watching and keep collecting.